晓得，想不晓得，想不晓得你我分离，想不晓得，想不晓得。أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أب القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الغر الميامين سيما بقية الله في الأرضين وحجته على الخلائق أجمعين مهدي هذه الأمة وطاووس أهل الجنة الحجة ابن الحسن المهدي فداه أرواح العالمين السلام عليكم the dear viewers on Imam Hussein TV 3 ورحمة الله وبركاته I would like to begin to congratulate you all around the world who are viewing uh, this channel live today congratulations on the anniversary of the birth of our awaited savior Imam al-Mahdi ajalallah ta'ala farajuhu al-sharif and the birth the anniversary of the birth of Ali al-Akbar may we all be his ransom inshallah in today's episode we will delve into a discussion uh, in regards to Al Imam Al Hujjah Ta'ala Farajah Al Sharif and uh, the commonalities between him and the descriptions, the uh, traditions, the characteristics between him and the Imam Hujjah May Allah hasten his reappearance and the prophets and the saints of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Now, uh, this d topic and this discussion rarely is always often discussed and spoken about. Um, however, today, inshallah, we will discuss it. And keep in mind that there are about 180 narrations in regards to the uh, characteristics of the Imam, uh, in regards to the attribute, the traditions that he has taken from the prophets prophets of Allah, all the prophets of Allah from Adam until the Khatam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him. Now, however, today in this uh, episode, we will only discuss two narrations. Um, the first narration is by Al Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam and it's narrated by Abu Basir. Now, Abu Basir, he says, Qala Al Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam that Inna fi sahib al-amr, and this sahib al-amr is the owner of the world, who owns this world, who is the Imam al-Mahdi, ajallallahu ta'ala farajahu al-sharif. He says, Inna fi sahib al-amr, sunnatun min Musa, a tradition from Moses ibn Umran. Wa sunnatun min Isa, he has a tradition from Isa ibn Maryam. Wa sunnatun min Yusuf, he has a tradition from Joseph and then he and he so he's saying that the Imam al Mahdi Sharif he has a tradition from Moses a tradition from Jesus a tradition from uh, Joseph and a tradition from the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him and then in this narration he discusses further he says فَأَمَّا سُنَّةٌ مِنْ مُوسَى as for the tradition that the Imam Sharif has from Musa is that he has al khawf wal ghaybah. So al khawf is fear. Why was Moses in fear? And why was he in al ghaybah? He was in occupation, he was absent. This tradition is the same to al Imam al Nahdi Sharif. Because Moses, they all wanted to kill him. They were searching for him. They wanted to capture him. They wanted to kill him. And he was in fear. He was always in fear. Likewise, Imam al-Mahdi, Ajallah Ta'ala, Farjah al-Sharif, he's in fear, al-Khawf. That's why he's absent. That's why he's in his occultation. Because throughout centuries and years, after years, they they planned to kill Imam al-Mahdi. They planned to capture him. They've planned, they have armies they're searching for him from day one of his birth. May we all be his ransom. So this is a tradition that the Imam has from whom? 
he has it from Musa ibn Umran. وَأَمَّا سُنَّةٌ As for the tradition that he has fi Isa, فَقَالُوا فِيهِ مَا قَالُوا فِي عِيسَى They said about Imam al-Mahdi what they said about Jesus. What did they say about Jesus? Even among the Christianities themselves, there is a dispute. There is a dispute among what they believe about Jesus. And likewise, when it comes to Imam al-Mahdi, عَجَلَّ اللَّهَ فَرْجُهُ الشَّرِيفِ There is a dispute among even the believers of the Imam when it comes to Imam al-Mahdi. وَأَمَّا سُنَّةٌ مِنْ يُوسُفِ As for the tradition that the Imam has from Yusuf, عليه السلام فالستر أخفى الله أن الإمام بين عباده يرونه ولا يعرفونه يوسف عليه السلام جوسف people saw him but they didn't know that he was the prophet of Allah أخفاه الله they, there was a veil a concealment and likewise Imam al-Mahdi he's not in another orbit he's not on another land he's on this earth he's among us يَرَوْنَهُ we, we see him, but we don't know him. There's a concealment. And he's around us. And this is why our scholars always tell us um, that wherever you are, follow the traditions, follow the halal and the haram. And never belittle anyone because it could be Imam al-Mahdi, Ajallah ta'ala, Fajr Sharif. How our scholars, they do a'mal and deeds for them to be pure and to meet the Imam. And when they see him, they don't know it's him until he disappears. Until he goes back into his ghaibah. Um, sometimes you belittle someone. You don't know who he is. But that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ja'ala waliyuhu bayna ibadih. He is with us. He is among us. He sees us, yet we don't see him. That's a sunnah from who? From Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf people saw him. Some mistreated him. Some treated him horribly. Some did things in front of him. But he was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the narration says, وَأَمَّا سُنَّةٍ مِّنْ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْهِ As for the tradition that he has, the sunnah from the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله فَيَهْتَدِي بِهُدَاهُ وَيُسِيرُ بِسِيرَتِهِ He will guide people how the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, guided people. And he will use his sunnah, he will use his religion, the way that the Prophet brought it. And the same way, some people say, you know, when the Imam comes, يخرج بالصيف. Yes, يخرج بالصيف. But he's not going to kill everybody. He's not here to kill and spread blood. No. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he came in a nice way and he spread religion. Yet, when they stood in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and they beheld their swords, Rasulullah defended himself. How did he defend himself? Harub. Harub Uhud and Hudaybiyah and so on and so forth. Likewise, Imam al-Mahdi, when he comes out, he will teach the rules of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Sunnah to his tradition, his way. Yet when you want to battle him, when you want to kill him, his sword is out. Now this is the first hadith. That is the commonalities um, between the Imam, ajallah ta'ala farjuh sharif, and the prophets. Now there's another narration, and this narration is narrated by Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. And by Al Imam Al Sajjad Zain Al Abidin alayhi salam. Same narration, but narrated by two Imams. And it begins, it mentions the five Ulil Azim, right? But it says that, it mentions this, but it says that the Prophet Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and all the Prophets uh, of Allah from Adam until the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, all these Prophets, the Imam has descriptions and he has commonalities between all the prophets from Adam until the Holy Prophet, all of them. But in this narration, it mentions the five of Ulil Azim and two not from Ulil Azim. So it mentions the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. It mentions Nabi Allah Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and it mentions all the five of Ulil Azim, and then it mentions Idris and Ayyub. So it begins first with Adam, Adam and Nuh. It says, فَأَمَّا سُنَّتَهُ مِنْ آدَمْ وَنُوحِ فَطُولِ الْعُمَرِ May we all be his ransom. Some people come to you today and they say, you know, how can the Imam live for that long? Are you serious? You're waiting for him? You know, how could he be alive? This is a sunnah. This is a tradition. This is nothing new, right? Adam and Nuh, the Imam says, فَأَمَّا سُنَّتَهُ مِنْ آدَمْ وَنُوحِ فَطُولِ الْعُمَرِ As for the tradition that the Imam, may Allah hasten his reappearance, has from Adam and Nuh, طول العمر, his longevity, long life. And we are celebrating the anniversary of his birth and we are still awaiting him. This is nothing new. Adam and Nuh lived for a very long time and that's a tradition that he took from Adam and Nuh. 
And then he says, فَأَمَّا سُنَّتُهُ فِي إِبْرَاهِيمِ What's the sunnah from Ibrahim? Ibrahim, he, uh, number one, إخفاء الولادة. Him and Moses, عليه السلام. نبي الله موسى, إخفاء الولادة. Their birth was concealed. Right? Imam al-Mahdi, عجلالله تعالى فرجه السريف, the same, similar. فَأَمَّا سُنَّتُهُ فِي إِبْرَاهِيمِ إخفاء الولادة. And then it says um, that the Imam, he was away from his people. How Ibrahim was away from his people. What happened to Ibrahim? Raha ila wadi ghayri dhi zir. the Quran says. He went into a place in the Bayt al-Muharram where there is nobody. There's no plants, nothing. There wasn't even water. Why? He left his people. Likewise, Imam al-Mahdi, ajallah ta'ala, faraj al-Sharif, he's on this earth, but he's away from us. We don't see him. He's in a land where he's not among his people. And then the sunnah that he took from Moses we mentioned was fear. وَإِخْفَاءِ الْوَلَادَ as well, the secret of the birth. Because they were going to kill him, they wanted to capture him and kill him. How they wanted to do that with Moses. And then here it mentions um, Idris. Now before I go into Idris, it also mentions Nabi Allah Ayyub. Now why Ayyub? What's the commonality and the parallels between Ayyub and Nabi alayhi salatu salam? and the uh, Imam, may Allah hasten his reappearance. What was it? Ayyub, he lived in trials and he suffocated Allah. Tests. He was in a trial after trial until there was faraj for a very long time. Imam al-Mahdi, ajallallahu ta'ala, farajuh al-Sharif. He's in a trial. He's in a test. He's waiting from the day that they killed his mother Fatima. And they squished her behind the doors. From the days that they killed the commander of the faithful. From the days that they killed Al-Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And all the Imams until this day. Imam Al-Mahdi is watching. Imam Al-Mahdi is viewing what's going on around the world. Don't assume he's not and it's hurting him. The corruption, the poverty, the, the har- muharramat that we commit, the hate, the crimes that you see around the world. Every world, everywhere you see children dying, you see um, genocide, you see... Imam al-Mahdi is watching and this is the test for him, a trial. He's waiting for us to pray for him. He's waiting for the time. He's waiting to take revenge for Ahl al-Bayt and what happened to them. And then there is faraj at the end. And that's the commonality between him and Ayyub alayhi salam. And then it comes to Idris. What's Idris? Now Idris, his real name is Akhnukh. But لِكِثْرَةِ ma yadrus, He studied Allah and he learned Allah. سُمِّيَ وَلُقِبَ بِإِدْرِيسِ He was given this name, a nickname Idris. But his actual real name was Akhnukh. He had so much knowledge. And keep in mind, uh, Idris and Nabi alayhi salatu salam, he is not deceased. He's alive. رَفَعَهُ الله. الله in Surah uh, Maryam, uh, verse 57, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَفَعْنَاهُ مَكَانًا عَلِيَّا We have lifted him back, him and Isa, Jesus, alayhi salam. And they bo- will both come and reappear with Imam al-Mahdi, عَجَلَ الله تعالى فَرَجْهُ الشريف. So do you see the, 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 the commonalities? Now, Idris had so much knowledge. Imagine, his name is Akhnukh. They give him a nickname, Idris. How much would he learn and study from the Holy Quran and from uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him? So much. The Imam, likewise, he will bring ilm, knowledge. So much knowledge. The Imam, ajallah ta'ala, farjuh sharif will come and he will bring that ilm. And he will bring that knowledge. Uh, in, in Surah uh, Ali Umran, verse 79, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I've brought the prophets, not so that you worship them. And no prophet came and said, come worship me. If you find all the prophets and all the imams until the imam, ajallah ta'ala, farjah sharif, it's all one message. They come and tell us, worship Allah. Leave this world. The holy verse says that no Imam and no messenger and no prophet came and said, Come worship me. They said, Come worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kunu Rabbaniyun. Come be spiritual, godly. Detach yourself from this world. Detach yourself from everything that is connected to your shahawat, your lust, your desires. 
And likewise, Imam al-Mahdi ajallallahu ta'ala farjahu al-sharif, when he reappears, this is what he's going to teach us. Kunu rabbaniyun, kunu rabbaniyin. And he's going to teach us the Holy Quran. And likewise, this was something that was Idris. Now, I'll mention to you a hadith where basically because all the prophets when they came, for example, Musa alayhi salam, he brought clay, right? And from that clay, what did he do? He created a bird. Um, and this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Musa, the Moses, you know. How can they show the evidence that I am a prophet of Allah, right? If someone comes to you today and says, I'm a prophet of Allah. Yeah, right. What a lie. You're joking. How are you going to prove it? This is exactly what they said, but in a different language and a different way to the prophets of Allah. Who do you think you are? So how can he show them that I am from Allah and I'm sending you the message, obey me? Allah has given them hujjah, evidence. Here, Moses, I give you the ability to pick up clay. Allah says, I give you the ability. So it's from Allah to pick up that clay and make a bird and say, go. Bi'ithnillah, with Allah's will. So they looked at Moses and what did they say? Oh, if Moses can do that, that if he can create from clay a bird, then he can create human beings. He is God, worship him. They said the same thing to Isa, son of Mary. What did they say? Okay, if he can revive the disease, let's worship him. He is God. He's the son of God. So they tried to do the same thing to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. A whole group um, came to the Holy Prophet from the Christians, scholars of the Christians and scholars of the Jews. They came to the Holy uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And they said to him, you know, Ya Rasulullah, Aturid an na'buduka ya Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Aturid an na'buduka kama abadat al Nasara Isa ibn Maryam. Do you want us to worship you, O Muhammad? How the Nasara worshipped Isa ibn Maryam? The Prophet said, Ma'adha Allah. How could you say that? Wama bidalika ba'athani. This is not why Allah has brought me, and this is not why what he how he why he descended me. I worship Allah, the Prophet said. I am the one teaching you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time, this conversation that happened, Allah descended a verse, Surah uh, Ali Umran, verse 79, that, وَمَا كَانَ لِبَشَرٍ أَنْ يُؤْتِيَهُ اللَّهَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالنُّبُوَةَ That until the akhir al-ayah, until the end of the verse, that oh, I have not sent a prophet that I've given him the kitab and given the hikmah and I've given the knowledge to say I am a Lord and I am God. But in fact, none of them said, Kunu Rabbaniyun, they said, be spiritual, be holy, detach yourself from this world. How many of us are so into this world and, and the lust and shahawat and we don't care that Allah is watching? Who cares? We commit the worst of the sins and yet we don't even have regret anymore. Do you know how that hurts the the heart of our Imam Zaman. Do you know why he's in trial? It's because of us. How do you feel today if you feel yourself that because of following your lusts and, and, and your desires and your worldly desires and you're not working on your aql, your ilm, your deen, your religion, your faith, you always have to elevate yourself. And you realize that you're doing the opposite and you're hurting the heart of the Imam. How do you feel? Imagine yourself, close your eyes and imagine everything that you've done today, just today from the sins, gather them down and the Imam is watching you and imagine him sitting down disappointed with tears. How do you feel? Now, let's go and take a view on the ajwa between the haramain and come back.
Assalamu alaikum again and welcome back. Now, let's talk, continue our discussion where it said, and we were discussing about Imam al Mahdi, Ajallah ta'ala Fajr Sharif, and how we feel when we hurt our Imam. All the messengers and all the prophets, they have one message, and it's to make us be godly spiritually, disconnected from this earth, disconnected from the sins, and follow the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of them, if you ever want to find out anyone who's teaching you the message of Allah, and this is something so that we don't misunderstand and say, okay, so how do we know that this person is a good person or who's teaching us a scholar is something good or how do we know that this prophet is a good prophet? How would it, they all have one message is to worship Allah and to be away from sins. If you ever see someone coming to you and telling you, you know, I'm a prophet, but you know, follow your desires, follow your shahawat and your raghabat, then what happens? When it hap when what happens is that you know that this person is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not from the message of Allah. All the prophets have one message, to detach yourself from, the, from this lust and this world and kunu rabbayuniyun, be spiritual. And this is why, my dear viewers, this is why that what we do is we follow the message of the prophets, all of them, the halal and the haram. Now, let's come back to the parallels and the uh, things that are attributed to Al Imam Al Mahdi from Idris is that Idris had so much knowledge, he gave it away. And it was all one to guide us to the truth. No prophet said that they are God. And no Imam said that they are God and worship me. They all told us and taught us to worship Allah. Likewise, Imam Al Mahdi is going to come out and he's going to bring us so much knowledge. So much knowledge that Imam Ali alayhi salam, uh, may we all be his, his ransom, the commander of the faithful. He says to Ibn Nabata, وَكَأَنِّي أَرَى الشِّيعَ فِي الْكُوفَ When the Imam comes out, and why Kufa? Because in Kufa is going to be Asimat al-Imam, the capital city of the Imam. So he says, كَأَنِّي أَرَى فِي الْكُوفَ الشِّيعَ قَدْ رَفَعُوا الْفَسَاطِيطِ They have... Um, they have opened up the tents, magna te mega tents, those huge humongous tents. Have you seen them? It's not a small tiny tent, a huge mega tents that where they make events with. The narration doesn't say fastat. Fastat is one mega tents. Fasatit, plenty of mega tents. Qad, uh, and what do they do in those mega tents in Kufa? Yu'allumuna al-Qur'ana kama unzil. And this word, kama unzil, it needs a whole episode. It needs a whole um, discussion to talk about kama unzil, how it was descended. Because Ibn Nabata was present and he said to the Imam, Alaysa huwa kama unzil. Isn't this the Quran, the way it was descended, the one that we have between our hands? Now don't misunderstand me. We don't have another Quran, the, the Shias. It's one Quran. The same words, bi kalimati, bi harikati, with the words, with the harakat, it's the same as the one you have. But, but the interpretation is different. You change the interpretation to what suits you, your politics. Kama unzil, yes, the same words, but the interpretation, who's the one who gathered the Holy Quran? Who? The commander of the faithful, Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi would tell him, Ya Ali, write. Write, Ya Ali. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he had in the Qur'an that he combined al-hashiya, the corners of the Qur'an. He would write down, for example, Abasa wa tawalla. Who is Abasa wa tawalla? He'd write it down. For example, al-ladhina maradu. Who is the ladhina maradu? Who are those who turned hypocrites and turned around? He wrote it down. For example, um, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ نَبَأٌ مِنْ فَاسِقٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا Who is that fasiq? He wrote it in the hashiya, in the corners of the Qur'an. He explained, there was interpretations. The Prophet would tell him, Ya Ali, write it down. Imam Ali would tell him, Laysa kama unzil. The Quran that we have, bi harikatihi, bi kalimati. I'll say this again so no one misunderstands. With its letters, with its word, it's the same, but the interpretation is not the same. How many people come and they interpret the Quran the way they want it? The Imam told him there are 70, sab'oon ism min asma' min Quraysh. Bi asma'ihim wa asma' abahim. 70 names from Quraysh. It was written 
in the Quran. Their names and their father's names, who they were. Muhiyya, deleted, omitted, goodbye. They, it didn't suit their politics. Not religion, politics. They removed it. Okay, someone can come and ask me, no, how come they have uh, uh, Abu, Abu Jahl's name there? Oh, because it, it hurts the prophets. That's your uncle. How come they have it? Oh, they removed 70 names from the Holy Quran. But it's the same. The same words, the same pronunciation. Everything is the same. However, the interpretation is different. Okay, who's going to teach us all that? How are we going to know? Imam al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, he's going to bring that ilm. You know, there's a hadith on Imam al-Sadiq, alayhi salam. He says that th they are uh, from Adam. So from Nabi Allah Adam until the uh, appearance of the Imam, we have only learned two harfan. Each haruf is a, a letter. But each haruf in, in the Arabic literature, what does it mean? It means... Alim, knowledge, huruf. How many huruf do we have? Letters. 27. The Imam Sadiq alayhi salam in the narration, he says, you only learned from Adam until the reappearance of the Imam, you only know two, harfan. And look how this world is advanced with technology and knowledge. And that's just harfan. He says, until the Imam comes out, he will take from the Holy Quran, he will take the huruf. The letters, because the letters, they're separated. For example, my name, it's, if you separate it and you mix the letters around, it doesn't mean anything, right? However, when you combine them and you stick the letters together, it means a name. These are huruf, keywords, knowledge from the Quran. We only know two, and this is how much we're advanced. He says, when the imam comes out, so the two letters that we know, the two knowledges, this advanced knowledge, he won't take it away from us. He will keep it, yet... What will he do? He will add 25 to it. 25 ilm, ulum, knowledge, and he will teach it to us. Imagine how the time in the world will be advanced. Can you find a government like the government of the imam? Yet do we pray for him? Yet do we await him? How do we feel from his absence and ghaybah? Or are we just living our lives and saying, Ya Allah, Ajal Bahura, just as a word? Or are we actually in pain waiting for the Imam? Or is it only when we watch the news and we see what's happening around the world, we wish the Imam reappears? We should wish that he reappears all the time because he is Hujjatullah. He is the one who's going to guide us with ilm, nur, knowledge. Imagine from Adam. Until his reappearance, we only know harfan. And this is how much we've advanced. Imagine how much and how the life would be when he reappears. It's going to be an amazing life. And I once mentioned that when Imam al-Mahdi, ajallallahu ta'ala, farjuhu sharif when he reappears, the knowledge will expand and expand. There is this narration on Imam Sadiq, alayhi salam. And what he says, Imam Sadiq, alayhi salam, is that um, when Imam Al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, reappears, um, the knowledge that we will reach, for example, not the 313, the close companions to the Imam. No, no, no. Not only those, they know, and the Imam knows, but even you, Junood Al-Imam, inshallah, all of us who are viewing today, we will become Junood Al-Imam. Junood is, you know, soldiers, the companions of the Imam. What will we do? We, he will teach us. The narration doesn't say what we will write, but they say that the imam will teach us 25 huruf, 25 knowledges from the Quran. نطبق Quran. We will follow the Quran. كما أنزل. How it was descended. We don't know the interpretations of it. Only of the few narrations of what we have from Ahl al-Bayt But كما أنزل. He will teach it to us. The, the narration says, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says that the junood al-imam, the souls of the imam, would want to go to uh, a, a room. A room is, you know, in the narrations it says it's um, a Roman, but it's actually all Europe. Um, how would we want to go? Because we have a mission on this earth. What's our mission? 
Our mission is to guide people. Our mission is not just to live and eat. Yes, the imam is going to come. There's going to be jewelry. Uh, the narration even says, يُعْطِي فِي السَّنَةِ عَطَائِينَ You know what عَطَائِينَ is? It's not rizq. Rizq is the sustenance, the food, the clothing, the shelter. عَطَائِينَ That, he, rizq, he gives it twice a year. And عَطَائِينَ عَطَائِينَ is a gift. Have you imagined when he comes out, he will gift us twice a year? What's that gift? Can you imagine? Ata'ain to everyone. So there's no corruption. There's no stealing. But at the same time, we have to work. He's going to give us knowledge. He's not going to use this technology. He's not going to destroy it. But he doesn't need anything. He doesn't need your technology. Hasha. He's going to bring 25 knowledges. The narration by Imam Sadiq says that the Imam will teach them to write on their legs something. And they will write it. And they will walk on water and oceans. And they will get to the room or Europe in general, and it says uh, <coughs> um, it's, it's a land where it's like um, uh, Turkey today, in the geographical, if you look at it today, it's Turkey, and Turkey at that time will be so advanced, it will be so advanced to the uh, uh, amount that um, the Imam says, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, that when they see those Junud walking on water, the Romans, the Europeans, and uh, Ahl Istanbul, Turkey, they will say, if that's how they are, right, the uh, junood al-imam, the soldiers of the imam, then how will the, uh, the imam be like? How will his close companions be like? Then what they would say, come, come in, welcome to our country. Welcome to our country. Because they're going to look and say, this is cool. If those are the soldiers of the imam, they just wrote something on their legs and they're walking on an ocean, on water, they will come test it. Is that water? And then once they realize that it's actually water, what's going to happen? They're going to say, welcome to our country. Come teach us your knowledge. If that is you, the soldier, how is your imam like? Knowledge, ilm. The narration says the imam, when he divides this earth, he divides the countries on this earth into 16. So how many countries do we have today? It's only going to be 16. How is the imam going to divide it? The narration doesn't say it, but 16. And he's going to take every 313 of those companions. They come from each country. So someone's from China. Yeah, someone's Chinese, someone's Indian, someone's from Iraq, someone's from um, all the countries around the world. You name them. Russia, and you name them. Each and one of those co uh, close companions of the 313, the imam will tell them, go rule. Here's the countries. Go rule. But if you ever have a question, look at your hand, the palm of your hand. You will see lawh min noor. Lawh min noor, it will give you the answer. You know how today you have your phone, you pick up your phone, and it has all the answers you need. You know, you can Google search. You can have all the information that you need from holding into your phone wherever you are in the world, but you need internet, right? However, the imam doesn't need that technology. Come on, he's advanced. He's going to teach us knowledge. So he tells his 313 companions, look at your palm and see the answer. If you ever have an answer. What happens is that they look at their palm, there's a loh min nur, light in their hands. And it gives us the answer. Have you ever had that feeling when you're in an exam and you haven't studied and you look at the paper and you're like, I wish I had this spiritual, spirituality and this ruhiya that I look at the paper and the answer is circled for me and I just circle it? When the imam comes, yes, we'll reach that ilm, we'll look at our hands and we get the answer. 25 letters. Each letter is a meaning of knowledge and ilm. The Imam, may Allah hasten his reappearance, he will come and teach that to us. He is the representative of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He combines all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when he comes out, he has a sermon, he says, Ayyuhan nas, <clears throat> man hajjani fi Ibrahim, ana awla nas bi Ibrahim. If you want to dispute me and have evidence from Ibrahim, I am the closest people to Ibrahim. I am the closest to Isa if you want the evidence from Isa. Here is Injil Isa, the book of Isa. Here is Asa Musa, the stick of Moses. Here is Amamati Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Some guy, the narration says, some guy from Asfahan will come to him and says to the Imam, show me Mu'jazat Ibrahim al-Khalil. Show me. You say, I want evidence from you. That the evidence of Ibrahim al-Khalil. We all know what happened to Ibrahim. The Imam, 
تكون نار عظيمة توقد نار عظيمة the narration says get bonfire make fire humongous huge fire people will start gathering they want to see that evidence of the imam some people this is how low their um, iman and faith is right they want to see they get all the sticks to make a bonfire ونار عظيمة يا نار كوني بردا وسلاما على حجة الله يا نار كوني بردا وسلاما على إبراهيم حجة الله the creator of this world has given him this land Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created this world has given this land inherited to Imam al-Mahdi عجل الله تعالى فرج الشريف إن الأرض يرثها عبادي الصالحون who is it? Imam al-Mahdi how can this fire burn him if he has the ism al-a'zam? You know what ism al-a'zam is? All the prophets and all the messenger have the secret name of Allah. And this is how they were able to do things that are beyond our imaginations. Imam al-Mahdi will enter that fire. It's not going to burn him. And when he's out, people will look. He gave us the evidence of whom? Of Ibrahim al-Khalil. This is all that we can, you know, discuss today. There's a lot of narrations and a lot of ahadith that are the commonalities between all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our awaited savior, Imam al-Mahdi, Adalullah ta'ala, farajah sharif Until next time, my dear viewers, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.